Aru Shah and the End of Time, Chapter 10, A Trip to the Beauty Salon. It took Minnie a full five minutes before she could say another word. Kill us? She squeaked. He's a demon, Minnie, said Aru. What do you think he's going to do? Sit you down for tea? Boo hopped along the sidewalk, gathered a pebble in his beak, flew up and dropped it on Minnie's head. Ow! Good, you felt pain. Relish it, girl child. That's how you know you're not dead, said Boo. Not yet, anyway. And you, he glowered at Aru. Careful with that sharp tongue. Aru rolled her eyes. She'd only been pointing out the obvious. Can't he just find his own way into the kingdom of death? Asked Aru. Why does he have to follow us around? This demon sounded lazy. He cannot see what you, what you can, said Boo. What if he tries to attack us in the meantime? Asked Minnie. We don't have anything to defend ourselves with. That wasn't exactly true. They each had a gift. Aru opened her hand, where the golden ping pong ball sat. It didn't look like it would do anything remarkable. She threw it onto the ground. Instantly, it bounced back into her hand. Aru frowned. She threw it farther. Still, it came back. Then she tossed it across the street, where it rolled straight into the gutter. A blink later, it was in her hand. Okay, that's a little cooler but still useless in a fight against a demon. Give thanks anyway, scolded Boo. Thanks, universe, said Aru. Even if I die, at least I can be buried with this ball attached to my hand. Not buried, said Minnie. Wouldn't you be cremated? I guess that depends on if you want to follow Hindu burial practices. Not helping Minnie. You never know what might turn out to be handy when you need it most, said Boo. It looked like he was going to say something else, but then Minnie squeaked. Whoa, she said staring at the compact she'd gotten from the Dharma Raj Raja. Envy flared through Aru. Did Minnie's gift actually do something magical? Why didn't hers? What's it showing you, she asked. A zit, said Minnie, pushing her nose to one side. What? What's... That's it? It means I'm growing up. Or it means bad hygiene, teased Aru. Or that, said Minnie. She looked far less excited when she closed the compact. So we have a mirror and a glowing ball, said Aru. Yes, said Boo. To fight monsters. Yes. <sighs> Honestly, what was the point of being a demigod if this was all they got? The shiny weapons were half the appeal anyway. And where was her mad majestic steed? She'd feel a lot better if she at least had a cape. Perhaps you will not need any additional weapons to get all three keys, said Boo. And if we do, asked Minnie. Boo's feathers shivered. If you do... Then I must take you to the Night Bazaar. Night Bazaar? That sounds awesome, thought Aru. Assuming we survive getting the first key, said Minnie. That thought was less awesome. Minnie looked at their surroundings. If this is where Urvashi's Mendy map led us, then the first key should be somewhere around here. But why would anyone hide a key to the Kingdom of Death in a strip mall? The three of them looked around the parking lot. There was a Chinese takeout place and a dry cleaning store. Also, a Starbucks that was missing some letters in its sign. So it read, S-T-A space B space 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 S. Aru's gaze fell to a sign that was a little brighter than the rest. It said, Beauty Salon. You'll be so hot you'll burst into flames. The longer Aru looked at the sign, the brighter the Mendy version of the first key glowed. Beside her, Minnie wiggled her fingers. Is your map glowing brighter? Maybe it works like a homing device, said Minnie, poking at the sprig of youth design on her wrist. Only one way to find out, said Aru. We have to go inside. Minnie gulped loudly but nodded, and they made their way to the salon. Light rippled around the edges of the storefront. It looked like a year-round Halloween store with a few stray ghost decorations on the window and a rotting pumpkin by the entrance. Masks of screaming women hung from the roof. Their elongated faces and gaping mouths reminded Aru of that Edvard Munch painting her art teacher had once shown the class. This place feels off, said Minnie, pressing closer to Aru. And do you smell that? She did. A sharp, acrid scent, like overheated rubber or charred leaves. She wrinkled her nose and covered her face with her sleeve. It smells like something was burned said Aru, or someone. Minnie made little goggles with her hands and pressed her face against the door. I can't see anything, she whispered. The door was a dark mirror. 
Aru wondered if it was a two one two way one that let people on the other side see you while you only saw your reflection. Aru had learned about those the hard way. Two weeks ago, she had looked in the mirror door to a teacher's lounge to see if there was something up her nose. A teacher had coughed quietly on the other side and said, Dear, you're free of boogers. Trust me, I can see quite clearly. Aru had been mortified. But now she didn't feel mortified. She felt a strange twinge of cold run up and down her spine. The air crackled and popped like logs in a bonfire. The hairs at the back of her neck lifted. A light shone from her pajama pants pocket. The ping pong ball was glowing. Engraved on the door was Madam B. Asira, head stylist. Aru knew that name, but why? Boo, when we open the door, you can't act like, well, yourself, said Aru. And what's that supposed to mean, re retorted Boo. You've got to act like a pigeon or you'll blow your cover. You want me to stay outside? I'll prop the door open, said Minnie. She pulled a piece of biscotto from her pocket, crumpled it up, and threw it on the ground. Here you go, Bertie. I do not eat off the ground. That bitter taste of smoke filled Aru's nostrils. I do not care, she whispered back. Now stay here and be a good pigeon while we investigate. A bell jingled as Aru opened the door. The girl slipped inside. Minnie left the door slightly ajar so Aru could see one beady pigeon eye peering through the crack behind them. The room was a bright lapis blue. Aru touched the wall gently and found it cold and hard. It was made of gems. Panels of mirrors formed the ceiling and door. Big comfy salon chairs lined the walls, but instead of a mirror in front of each chair, there was a portrait. Each one was of a beautiful woman, and yet they didn't look very happy because they were frozen in the middle of screaming just like the masks on the roof. The line of salon chairs seemed endless. There had to be as many as 70 pictures of screaming women. Nope, 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 said Minnie. This doesn't look right. How can I help you girls? From the end of the room, Aru saw a lovely woman walking toward them. Urvashi had been beautiful and the way a rose was beautiful. The mind was already tra trained to find it exquisite. But this woman was beautiful in the way that a bolt of lightning shattering the sky was beautiful. Almost scary and definitely striking. She was slim and tall with shiny black hair that was piled in soft curls on the top of her head. When she smiled, Aru saw a crescent of sharp teeth behind her red lipstick. Did you come here for a haircut? No, said Minnie. Aru elbowed her in the ribs and said, We didn't mean to, but could we get one? Aru wanted to spend more time with the stunning woman. Just being around her made her feel entranced. She had an overwhelming desire to please this person. No way, said Minnie firmly, reaching for Aru's arm. What's wrong with you? muttered Aru, yanking her arm away. The woman just wanted to cut their hair. Plus, she was so pretty. We need to look around anyway. Business has been a little slow, said the woman. Now she was standing right in front of them. I'm Madam B. What are your names, lovely girls? Minnie, said Minnie, her voice getting squeaky. She wasn't looking at the woman. Her eyes were on the wall. Aru. Pretty names, crooned Madame B. Usually I only cut older women's hair. Their beauty is a little more, well, potent, she grinned. It has steeped longer, like tea, and therefore it lasts longer. Here, have a seat. She ushered them to two of the empty salon chairs. I'll only be a moment, said Madame B. Just need to get some supplies from the back. Before she left, she smiled. It made a roux feel like she'd eaten a stack of waffles, rather warm and syrupy and sleepy. Look, hissed Minnie. She grabbed Aru's face and turned it toward the wall. The woman in the nearest portrait was still screaming, but there was something else. Her eyes. They were moving, following Mimi and Aru. Another cold twins, twinge coursed through Aru, waking her up. She trapped these women, Aru, whispered Minnie. We've got to get out of here. Aru slid out of her chair. Minnie was right, but there was another problem. The first key has to be here, said Aru. She held up her hand, where the design glowed brighter and brighter. We have to find the sprig of youth before we leave. The girls scanned the room. It was pristine. With the mirrors on the ceiling and floor, they should have been able to find it easily, but they didn't see anything that looked like the Mendy design. It's got to be around here somewhere, said Minnie. Why couldn't the gods have just given us more useful gifts, grumbled Aru. 
She couldn't call it Indra. She couldn't call Indra dad. It was too weird. Minnie took out her compact. When she opened it, a strange thing happened. In the small mirror, Aru saw an alternate vi version of the room they were standing in. The walls were studded not with gemstones, but with bone fragments. Instead of a polished floor, they stood on packed dirt. And when Minnie angled the compact to reflect the portraits of screaming women, the paintings revealed something very different. Skulls. The compact sees through enchantments, said Minnie in awe. A sound made them jump. They both looked up to see Madame B coming toward them, carrying a small tray that held two miniature jars. Had to find small vessels for your ashes, she said, grinning. A ruin Minnie glanced at the compact. Where there had been a beautiful woman, now they saw Madame B for what she really was, an Asura, a demon. Her hair wasn't lovely, black locks, but coils of fire. Her teeth weren't teeth at all, but tusks that curled up and out from thin black lips. Her skin wasn't a dusky shade of amber, but a pale and sickly white. And there was something at the top of her head. A fancy blue hair clip? No. A twig with tiny blue blossoms. Minus the color, it was identical to the design on their Mendy maps. It was the sprig of youth, the first key to the kingdom of death.